Hello, 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 everybody. Here it is, the 2nd of September. We have a special guest today, very special guest, one of the OTEC pros, one of my brothers from another mother, Mr. Bob Ticusi. Uh Anyway, and we got him today because get, because it's Labor Day. That's how we got him. <laughs> Normally, he'd be working. Um, anyway, a uh, very special friend of mine. I met him. Me too. Oh, the first time I met the first time I saw him was when Julie went to their big meeting. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Chris so he can introduce this gentleman correctly, and then the, we'll let him tear up the floor. Go ahead, Chris. And before I introduce him, I would like to do a couple announcements real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. Cindy Hopkins is in the hospital. Please say prayers for our sister. And Elsie Patch's mom um, is is not doing so good, so they're going to both need prayers. And anyone else I've mentioned, uh, please pray for them. But those two individuals right now, let's give them some extra prayers. I do want to wish a, we got quite a few birthdays today. The people that yeah, I yeah yeah happy birthday to Jane Redford. Please make sure you blow her up. Uh, Ava Diaz, make sure you blow her up. Happy birthday to you, um, Daryl Cook. Happy birthday to you. And my brother from another mother in India, Mr. Dinesh Koshin, I think you pronounce his last name. Happy birthday to you guys. Enjoy your day. Uh, make sure you blow all those names up. Tell them happy birthday. Show them the love. Um, and I'm going to bring this guy on right now. I I, I know only about Bob's uh, videos. He's a great guy. We, we, we have a tendency of his favorite word is focus. Uh, he does stay very focused. He's a he's a true gentleman. Uh, I got to meet him actually. I got I think yeah I got to meet him in Boston, uh, which there's a lot of funny stories about that. What I did to him on on accident, but he's a great guy. He's a true gentleman. He's a God fearing man, and I love him with all my heart. So let's bring Bob on here, and we, we get you center screen. Bob Dacusi, I love you, brother. Stay focused now. <laughs> all right, and the floor is all yours, Bob. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my brothers, my big brothers, Brother Madi and uh, Brother Chris, my brothers from another mother. It's true, Brother Madi. Thank you for for who you are. Thank you to Chris for, you know, just steering us all to the right direction. Uh, my name is Bob Takusi. Actually, I'm Robert Takusi. Everybody calls me Bob, but sometimes if you if you call me Robert, I won't even know that uh, it's me that you're talking about. So everybody calls me Bob. I was actually born in England in the late '60s. Um, but I grew up in Cameroon before coming to the United States. So I consider myself a British Cameroonian American, meaning that I'm a, I'm a British by birth, uh, a Cameroonian at heart, and an American by choice. Um, I actually began my, my primary and secondary education in Cameroon. And then part of my... Um, my higher education was in Cameroon. I was at the University of Yaoundé, the Faculty of Law and Economics, where I, I had almost finished my first term, my first year. And uh, there was an uprising. If those of us are from Cameroon, if you remember, around that time, around 1990, there was an uprising, student revolution in the University of Yaoundé. And my parents said uh, it was too hot. Some students actually died. And my late sister, who, who's, uh, who was in Houston at the time, convinced my father that I had to get out of Cameroon. And that's how I, I, I was whisked out of Cameroon. And um, my career in law just just uh, just died. Because when I got to the United States, I went to the, uh, I could not continue in that path. I had to start all over from scratch. So I, I had to go to the, invest, uh, to the uh, Houston Community College, which I could easily get an admission. And I started in banking and finance my first two years. And then I later switched to uh, information technology where I obtained my, my bachelor's degree from the University of Phoenix and I have several several certifications. But in 1998, I joined the, the, uh, the IT industry with a company called Cambridge Technology Partners. We did rapid application development around, around, around the, the country. So um, <clears throat> that, that, that's what gave me the, 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 the privilege of understanding exactly what our founder, Mr. Ash, is doing here for us. But I'm also greatly involved in some other uh, foundations. Uh, I'm actually the spokesman of two 
uh, prominent foundations that are helping folks in Cameroon. One is the Lambe Diabetic Foundation, and the other is the Secret Transglobal Alliance Foundation. The Diabetic Foundation is uh, is very special to me because my, my father, my late father, died uh, of complications from diabetes. So this friend of mine, when he was he also had uh, family issues with uh, with diabetes. So when he was starting this foundation, he contacted me, and we both went to Cameroon at the time, and we set up shop all around. We have we had a few, maybe about five cities that we have little uh, clinics where people come in and they they take their just their blood sugar just to know their blood sugar, and then uh, so uh, they can move forward and sort the appropriate treatment that they need. So we have about maybe from in five cities, but right now with the with this on residents in Cameroon, we are shut down. We are only operating in one city, which is Boya. We're just sending the various test strips and everything just so people can come in and get their blood sugar. And then for the Secret Transglobal Alliance, it's um it's a girl, uh it's a it's a women uh, foundation. Uh they, they go around the world helping girl, girl children, just empowering them, helping them, granting them scholarships and things like that. So I speak to them, I speak for their behalf most of the time. Uh, when they have these fundraisers and things like that, I'm the I'm the guy who is behind the microphone trying to help uh, the sweet people to make contributions to this um, to these efforts because it's worth it. Um, my journey in on passive was uh, uh, is quite interesting. If we all remember, um, that was around uh, April April 26 of 20, 2020. That's when I joined on passive. And if you remember, that was around the onset of of COVID. You know, COVID had just started. And uh, it was the first week that I, we were working from home. So here am I, I'm sitting down, I'm thinking about what am I going to do to enhance myself because I knew we we're going to be home for, for a while. So I was thinking about going and trying to finish my MBA, which I started and I did not continue or, you know, get some certifications done and things like that. But then a friend of mine, very good friend of mine, uh, we have a generational friendship. He lives in Boston. His name is Oscar, Oscar Sewele. He called me and he was explaining to me about this company. And he actually really wanted me to, because he knew I was in the IT industry, he wanted me to on, come and see if I could really understand to break it down to him. So I, when I came uh, the following day, I attended the meeting. I was just blown away. I was blown away by the information that I got. But something in my mind, something struck me because... Of some books that i read i like reading a lot i read i used to read books a lot at least one book every at least a book a month not now with children and everything you you just uh, don't have time but there was a book that i read uh, it's written by robert kiyosaki in this book robert kiyosaki is trying to explain it's called rich dad poor dad i think most of us have heard that book robert kiyosaki is trying to explain how wealth was was um um was determined 300 years ago he said first wealth was determined by those who owned the uh, uh, the land you know around around the late 18th 19th century those who owned the land were those who owned the wealth says kiyosaki and then the following century it was those who owned the factories remember the industrial revolution those who owned the, the factories and the industries they were those who owned the wealth but robert kiyosaki is saying that in this our time in this time that we are this 21st century those who are going to own the wealth are those who are going to have the information. And that information is going to come to you at the speed of light. If you blink, you're going to miss it. He says that there are those who are going to be multi-millionaires and those that are those who are going to be left behind. So when I listen to Unpassive, these are the thoughts that are, are in my head. Is this what Kiyosaki was saying? Then come, come, comes Ashwafara, he's telling us that, you know, if what is information? Information is data. We are now a data-driven society. When we talk about artificial intelligence and all these things, it's all data that is being put together and mastered and studied. So data is key. Data is money. And as Mufara comes around, he tells us that the new economy, the new commodity, the commodity of the century is data. So now everything is making sense in my head. So I'm like, okay, this is the right place that I should be. But the key for me here is, when I listened to this opportunity for the first time, my dear friends, three things struck me that made me confirm that, okay, this guy is serious about what he's trying to do. He means business. He's trying to answer some, answer some questions that have been plaguing people for a while. He's trying to answer some 
question of solve a problem. He was trying to be a solution to certain problems. Number one, I found out that we do not have to recruit. I don't know how to sell, to talk to people, to sell stuff. I cannot, I don't like to, I don't know how to depend on someone else for my success. If you tell me to do something, I will do it. I will bend over backwards, lift rocks, pull uh, tooth from somewhere. I will do it. But when I have to depend on the effort of someone else for success, that's not me. So when I found out that you do not have to recruit, the system is built and designed such that it's going to work for you. That was the one thing that made me say, hey, this is where I have to go. Number two, you don't have to make a recurring payment. Let's remember, everybody who is in this uh, kind of line of business, you go in there, you have to make payments, monthly payment, whether you succeed or not, you are making payment, they have your debit card, credit card on file, they are charging you on a monthly basis, whether you're making money or not. As you far as answer that question, he's saying that we are not going to make, you are going to make a one-time payment. And then after, the system is going to work, go to work for you, use your proceeds that you make and then make the payment for you so you are not never ever ever going to take money again from your pocket to pay into the system that was very attractive to me and then the third thing was the products oftentimes you go most of these companies there what do they do they they, they, they they come up with some kind of a scheme they come up with some idea or something then they sell it they pitch it out there make some money after a few, maybe a couple of years, they disappear. We have our own products. On Passive is building a suite of products, revolutionary innovative products that are going to disrupt the internet. So we have our own products. We are going to make a one-time payment and then you don't have to, rec to, to recruit people. You don't have to go kill yourself. But if you want to, we are saying, if you want to, that's fine. The option is yours. If you want to go to work and talk to people to start pre-building your business before the system goes live, good for you. But if you don't want to, fine, the system is going to go to work for you and do what uh, it is promising to do for us. So that was just so appealing to me. And believe you me, even as an IT guy, when I listen to this prospect from Mr. Ash, I signed up without even looking up what on passive was because I believed in the mission. I knew exactly that this was, it was true. There were three things as well that also was running in my mind. Number one, this concept is unique. There is nothing like on passive out there in the world that we know as we speak. A company coming in, building her products from scratch or from, from the ground up embedded with artificial intelligence. Yes, there are a few companies out there, mass, there are large co companies out there, IT tech companies out there. Guess what? They were built 20, 25 years ago. Artificial intelligence has been around for a long time, since the 50s and 60s. We agree. But there is no company that we can tell you that has approached AI development as Ash Farah has. That is a fact. Everybody is now trying to patch in, you know, trying to catch up, you know, to, to, to meet up with the times. But Ash Mufara says, I'm going to build today's te uh, uh, tomorrow's technology today. In his own words, I'm going to build tomorrow's technology today. And it starts in 2018. Most of these companies are coming now. It is in the 2022, 2023 that you are seeing some of these companies signing executive order, ordering their teams to go back and start building stuff from scratch. Ash Mufara started uh, 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 six years ago, seven years ago. So the concept is unique. That's number one. Number two, it is possible technically. And I say this with, with conviction because I am in the field. I began my career in this industry with a company called Cambridge Technology Partners. They were based in Boston, Massachusetts. I think they were bought by Novell and then somebody else bought them out. We did rapid application development around the country in the continental United States. So I understand how these systems are built, how they work. So what Ash Mufara is telling us that he's going to build, technically, it is possible. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. And that's what we are seeing. It is not easy. And when we saw it, when I listened to it for the first time, I realized that 
it was going to take long. And that's what all of us were saying behind the scenes. We knew that it takes time. We don't understand the implications of artificial intelligence in full yet. So there were going to be some challenges. It's coming, you are building one integrated system with single sign-on, multiple applications coming in integrated in, in, in one place. Just to build that digital integration hub is another story, you know? And then having all these applications coming in, single sign-on, it is a massive undertaking that Mr. Ash, according to me and most of my brothers in the, in the industry, we are saying that he's ahead of time. If you look at where we are, we're talking about any, anything happening at any moment, we are saying that we are, we are affirming that Ash Mufara is actually ahead of time, you know, given all the circumstances, given all the, the issues that we have faced, we are saying that he's ahead of time. So number two, it is technically possible what Ash is saying. Number one, it is unique. There's nothing like unpassive out there that we know of. Tell me, challenge me, and I'll tell you no. There's no system like unpassive that's coming in. And thirdly, what was the cost? How much did it really cost? So having all that in mind, knowing that I don't have to recruit anybody, knowing that oh, I'm going to make only one payment, knowing that the products are there, there are real products that are being developed by, by Mr. Ash. I said, okay, I'm going to play my part. I'm going to play my part. I have to, I have to play my part by exposing this opportunity to as many people as possible. I'm an African by origin. So my mindset was, how do I help? How do I empower? How do I send out this message to the rest of my African communities first? Because we realized that we sat here in our various homes around the world, various offices around the world. We just saw something called Facebook. We jumped into it. We started using it. Before then, there was Google. We jumped into Google. We started using Google. Before then, there was Amazon. And then uh, 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 Zoom. We just saw them. They came. I'm talking to us as Africans. We have no stake in it. Then comes Ash Mufare, giving us an opportunity to be part of this revolutionary disruptive innovation of our times. I said I was going to come out of my comfort zone, regardless of any personal, professional detriment. I'm going to come out and I'm going to shout to the top of my voice as loud as I can for those who want to listen to and believe in to come in because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that when you miss it, that's it. You will never have a chance for. And we began explaining to people, explaining to people, we created our own winners, myself, my brother, Oliver Fonte, and a few others, Marcien, and my late sister and my late brother, we created all winners, which was a more of a, late night 9 p.m eastern time uh webinar for those who went to work who would come after would explain create a small family forum until when they it was later stopped then I migrated to the heroes and then ramati found us in our little small corner and then he, he, he plucked us out from obscurity and we had this privilege to also be part of this history that is in the making by also explaining uh the process of what is going on with on passive within, within us so I, I, I'm very, very confident. I'm very, very confident. I'm very, very satisfied. Personally and professionally, I have learned a lot. Ash Mufara has sent me back to the books. I did not continue my master's degree that I was, my MBA that I was going to pursue. I have, some of my certification have expired, but I have spent the last four years, guys. I can tell you that I have, I have more than two PhDs. Based on the knowledge that I have garnered from Ash Mufara and Unpassive, based on the professional experience that I have received directly and indirectly, working with my brothers, my fellow old tech pro brothers, and all of you out there, brother Madi Chris, learning from everybody, um, um, uh, Mike Ellis, uh, uh, everybody, uh, Red Red Friend, and all those who have brought us together to expose this opportunity. It is a massive undertaking, and I can say that I have a PhD in Unpassive. So I'm very, very excited for where we are, where we are heading to. I can tell you that right now we are we have reached the arc. We have reached the arc of unpassive, and it is now bending towards reality. We have reached the arc. We are bending towards reality. 
And the reason why we are is because Ash Bufara never gave up. He never gave up. So let me quote one of the greatest orators of the 20th century, Sir Winston Churchill. He said, the lesson is never give up. And he repeated it four times, never give up, never give up, you never give up. Never in anything, never give up in anything, whether it is great or small, big or petty. You never give up except to your convictions of honor and good sense. You never give up. You never give up except to your convictions of honor and good sense, says Sir Winston Churchill. And Ash Mufara never gave up, and so did we. So I can say congratulations to us in advance because we are bending that curve as soon as Mr. Ash comes back and brings us our OES back. We know that we are now in the in the in the fast lane on the highway, and there's no stopping us. Um, he talked about us. We are going to have our new economy. It is a whole different ball game. We are going to move together, create this one big family, and then go out to the world and do exactly what, if we were to ask Mr. Ash of us, is to pay it forward. To pay it forward, and that's what I'm going to do. When everything is said and done, and Unpassive begins to deliver to us what she has promised, then, rather than me being just a spokesman to a couple of foundations, I cannot begin to achieve my own purpose. I cannot begin to answer who I am, what costs me, why am I here, what is my purpose? Because Ash Mufara and Unpassive, they have given me that opportunity and that platform to now create my own foundation where I will be an ambassador of goodwill around the world. That is what I think my mission on this world is, on earth is, and it has been enabled by none other by Ash Mufara, who I may say, who will be accorded by history favorably to be the most significant human being that ever set his foot on this planet Earth based on the magnitude of the impact of what Unpassive is going to be, not only to the users of her products, but also to us, you and I, the humanity, to us, to mankind. And having said that, I think I'm just excited and waiting for the next moves. Stay focused, stay prepared, because we are fine. Like my brother Oliver Fortes says, I'll send it back to you, brother Chris and Mary. Well, well, well. I didn't think you had it in you, but you did. I like real quick your, uh, of course, I'm diabetic, so I really love to hear that. Uh, you're, 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 listen, you're a natural spokesman for any anything. But proud to have you and pass it. I'm proud of the Tech Brothers, uh, all of them, because you guys have brought a whole new level of understanding of what maybe what Ash is going through, the tools, the products, everything. And you, you Bob, have been a very good leader uh, explaining to people, no matter who they are, this is what we have. It's the greatest in the world. We definitely, I love this part, the arc bending. Yes. Uh, we are definitely bending around every company business person in the world because it is unique it is different and uh, you bring excitement and i love that and i love that that we get to teach you about focus because it's been a, it's been a very it's one it, that's your lane bob that's your lane everyone Thank knows you. it but you brought some great great things uh i can now complete my own what did you say purpose yes that's the way i've felt for a long time is on passive Ash Mafara is giving us an opportunity to complete some of the missions that we've had in life that maybe we couldn't do before. So yes, I absolutely sir. love that. Never yes, give sir. up, never give up, never give up. Winston Churchill, yes. uh, a famous, famous line. I love it. Bob DeCousy, I love you, brother, with all my heart. And I'm glad I got to meet you, even though uh even though I tried taking some of his I took his taxi. No. <laughs> Well, fine, brother Chris. Thank you so much. Marty. Hey, I want to say, Bob, you know, I mean, you make me proud to be an unpassive. You are a class act from 
from the first day I met you. Uh, very good speaker. Nobody can speak better about Unpassive than you. Really, I mean that. Yeah. And uh, you're inspirational to me. Um, I saw that in you a long, long time ago. I talked about you when I first met you. Uh, yes, to Ash and other people, I just knew. And you are exactly... You're exactly who you are, brother. I mean that. You're you're um, you're a shining star and on passive. People look up to you, um, and I feel a lot like you do about on passive. It, it's 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 not your normal thing. It's something that we'll never get a chance again to be in something like this. We just yes. will never be able to have something like this. And I'm so glad I get to share it with someone like you, uh, Chris, and many of our other tech people and many people out there because we're all learning that there's a lot of diamonds in the rough, a lot of diamonds out there, and uh, we need to gather them up. And there's some out there that aren't in on passive yet, and they're coming because of people like you, Bob. I mean that. Yeah. And uh, fantastic job. And uh, yeah, it was, this was good. Very good. We're doing your brother at noon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's watching. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that's for tomorrow, guys. We're yes. but we're trying yeah. to get all the old tech pros on. Yeah, we know everyone's kind of doing every, and that's great. Uh, but the old tech pros are a class act in theirself, and they brought a lot of people together. And Bob, Absolutely. you speak Bob. Do you speak to you speak French too? Don't you? Yes, yes, but not yeah. not very fluent. But I understand it more than I speak. Better than me, that's for sure. But and I yes. always say, anyone that can learn more than one language language is extremely intelligent. And Bob, you show your intelligence all the time. So man, I appreciate everything that you've done. Uh, right, you Chris, me more than you let, know. Let me let me teach you something. Day for you, Chris. Day for you. Do what? How for you? How for you? How for you? Yeah. I no idea. Maybe fine. Stay fine. Stay fine. <laughs> Come on. Right, so. Maddie's now in Cameroon. Yeah. Stay focused, Chris. Stay focused. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Bob. Thank Happy you. Uh, Labor Day. Happy oh, Labor, yeah. Day, Happy Labor Day, everybody. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day off. And All thank right. you for taking the time. Yeah. Of um, course. Obviously, you're going to relate to a lot of people you already have. And we had a, a lot of people tune in today knowing that you were going to be on. Um, you, I told you your life will never be the same, bud. You did. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you all. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <See> you <guys. laughs> Bye, Bob.